Welcome back. With 24,248 new cases taking the country's tally to about 6.97 lakh cases of the Wuhan virus, India surpassed Russia as the third worst affected nation. But even in these 24,000 cases overall, we had close to about 14,000 recoveries overnight, and which is very, very encouraging. Let's uh, get a quick check of the numbers. 15,000 recoveries, actually. Now, Maharashtra recorded a record 6,555 new Wuhan virus cases, with the count rising to 2,6,619. As many as 84,524 have been infected in Mumbai alone. With the death of 151 more patients, the state's fatality count rose to 8,822. A quick check of the updates from some of the other states now, where the where Karnataka government has revised quarantine rules for interstate travellers, scrapping the seven-day institutional quarantine mandated for travellers coming into the state from Maharashtra. The new state rules that uh, travellers coming into Karnataka from other states, including Maharashtra, will be placed in 14-day home quarantine. Up north in the national capital, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has urged hospitals to encourage recovered Wuhan virus patients to donate plasma after 14 days of recovery from the disease. Addressing an online media briefing, he said that there has been a spike in demand for plasma over the last four to five days after the opening of a plasma bank in Delhi. Over in Rajasthan, as the cases continue to rise, the government has now decided to cancel all undergraduate and postgraduate exams for all the universities, colleges and technical educational institutions for the academic year 2019-2020. All students will be promoted to the next class without examination. The state has reported over 19,000 Wuhan virus cases so far. Of these, over 400 patients have died. In Jharkhand, devotees in Ranchi offered prayers from outside the Pahari Mandir as its portals remained shut for on the first Monday of Savan month today. The Jharkhand government has extended the lockdown in the state till the 31st of July. In Tamil Nadu, lockdown has been erased in Tamil Nadu capital Chennai and other parts of the state today. This even as the state has recorded 4,150 new Wuhan virus cases in the last 24 hours. Tamil Nadu's coronavirus tally has reached 1,11,151 and the death toll is at, a, at 1,510. Chennai alone has reported 1,713 COVID-19 cases, taking the city's total to 68,254. So how does it look? Where are the caseloads coming from? Are there new hotspots and areas? Are the existing uh, states and cities which were contributing to majority of the payloads or caseloads still the ones to worry about? Let's go across to the man who's got the numbers on that magic wall, which is now our Corona wall. Zaka Jacob, this is your territory. Tell our viewers the positives and also the cases are the reasons where we need to still be on our guard. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the worries is southern India, which uh, was relatively showing great amount of progress through much of April, May, even large parts of June, suddenly in the last couple of weeks uh, has suddenly seen a big spike. Chief among it, of course, happens to be the state of Karnataka, which is now looking at uh, inching very fast to that 25,000 figure. Uh, I think by the end of the day today, when the evening figures come out, it will reach 25,000. And Bengaluru, uh, which was had a remarkable story through much of April and May and even the first half of June, suddenly is looking uh, very close to 10,000 cases, 1,200 added over a 24-hour period. Uh, the worry is this. There is a threefold differential between the number of active cases that are coming in to the number of discharges that are taking place from hospitals, as a result of which the recovery rate is in the teens. The national recovery rate is 60% plus. The state recovery rate is also somewhere around 40, 45% plus, 40% 40 plus, so 41.9. But in Bengaluru city, it's just 13%, and that's a big worry. I'll just show you the curve of the city itself, and you'll get a better sense of why Bangalore has suddenly just erupted in the last 10 days or so. Take a look at this. 27th of June, it was at 1,300 cases. So relatively uh, okay up until that point. The curve was much flatter. And then from the 27th of June, June, look at the way it's exploded uh, from the 27th to today the 6th which is roughly about 10 days or so in 10 days uh, Bangalore has seen an eight-fold increase from 1,300 to 8,100. And remember, this, these are the active cases. So these are people who are either in home quarantine or some form of institutional quarantine. Just to give you a sense of how that stacks up, uh, just take a look at this graph. And the reason why Bangalore has suddenly exploded is because of the daily case load. It's in the high teens, 14% added yesterday, 16% the day before, 16% the day before. If you were to just compare this with, let's say, Mumbai, right? Mumbai has had an exponential growth uh, through much of April and May. But in, in large parts of June, for the last three or four weeks now, look at this figure at the bottom. It's in the ones. And I think that's where Bangalore needs to get to. Bangalore, right now, it's adding 
one extra case for all 10 new cases that's coming in. And that's a big, big problem uh, as far as the city is concerned. And that's why the medical infrastructure in that city is really being stretched to the limit. Yes, uh, uh, just a follow-up on Bengaluru. June 29th, it's 22.3%. Remember the last time we had looked at these numbers, they were on and off days. Some days it was 9%, it was 6%, and then it was some days it was 4 12%. But now it's a consistent 16% yeah. up. And this means it will soon be looking at 20, 30,000 cases. And uh, that is going to be a cause for worry. Is Bengaluru now going to become the new Delhi or Mumbai? Uh, Zaka, that, that's, that becomes the challenge, isn't it? Between 29th of July, to, uh, June to the 5th of July, if you look at the numbers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, uh, now I think you're seeing a consistent pattern. You're right. Over the last five days, it's in the 16 uh, percent range or so. Uh, but the worry is that it's also taking longer for people who are in hospital to be discharged. That's why I go back to that graphic, and that's a fascinating marker mm -hmm. for me. Take a look at this. The reason why this is so low in a city which, you know, it's a modern city, it has great hospitals. The reason why this figure of recovery rate is only in the teens when the national average is at 60% is because the people who are getting admitted are staying in hospital for longer. That's been changed today. Today the government mm. has said that home quarantine is enough. You don't have to have institutional quarantine. So hopefully this figure will go up as well. But right now Bangalore has a lot on its plate. Thanks for that Zaka. Let's go across to Stacey. Stacey and Vinay are joining us live and uh, Stacey the latest from Bengaluru. This home quarantine rules have changed. Bengaluru was very very tight. Karnataka was very very strict in terms of who they will let in, who they will let out. Why are things going away from their control? Well, it seems like it is pretty much going away from control, but the government doesn't want to really work towards that. They, in fact, are relaxing these quarantine norms even further. Even people coming from Maharashtra now don't really have to go into that seven days institutional quarantine, but will just maintain that 14-day home quarantine. Not just this, even asymptomatic uh, patients can be only under home isolation. That is another thing, like Zaka was pointing out, uh, that uh, really low recovery rate is because people are in hospitals for longer. Well, the government has understood this this and they feel that the medical infrastructure is being stretched and which is why they are letting patients be in home isolation or get treated at home itself if they are asymptomatic. Well, there we've seen instances in the past last week, in fact, of ambulances not reaching on time, of uh, people being denied hospital beds in private hospitals. Now the government, the BBMP, especially here in Bengaluru City, wants to streamline the process, wants to yeah. see how to go about it. They have uh, accorded two ambulances per ward. They have meetings with ward committee level members as well to, uh, to try and streamline, try and see how one can, if they are showing symptoms, they are moved from one place from their home if it has to be two uh, COVID care centers. There are definitely, definitely more COVID care centers now. 10,000 beds is what we're looking at in Bengaluru city alone. So yes, in terms of medical okay. infrastructure, they are doing their best. But in terms of how they want to really go about with treating patients, the discharge policy, what do they have to take policy-wise, that's something they need to take a relook on, especially because of these huge surge in cases and most of these cases not having any contact and travel right. history, but just people with uh, uh, influenza like in, uh, illnesses and sorry patients now that are becoming the bigger uh, caseload here in Bengaluru city at least. Well, now there are other cases of asymptomatic patients also succumbing to the Wuhan virus which are coming in, and but these are uh, still limited number of cases and stray cases. They are exceptions and not the rule. Uh, well, there are more updates on the Wuhan virus and its trends and what the trait of this entire virus is or the behavior is. We'll go to that in just a bit quick word from Vinay. Vinay, we spoke earlier here on The Nation at Five when you said that uh, Mumbai is moving on and Maharashtra is moving on into this unlock mode where they're trying to open up hotels and they're also, and, and partially, are restaurants going to be next? Uh, what is their, uh, what are the kinds of relaxations? And I also see there is a lot of rain that Mumbai is taking. Well, yes, and a lot of rain. Uh, there was a prediction for intermittent heavy rainfall and that is exactly what's happening in Mumbai. Uh, yes, there is a plan in place in order for further lockdown. We are being told that spas, restaurants will be next in order and right now guidelines are being framed. Right now the government uh, claims that because Mumbai, Mumbai metropolitan region areas, all these places are extremely important in terms of financial activities. The hotels have been allowed to open. They will function on 33% capacity. From 8th of July, these orders will be implemented across the state. 
several restrictions have been put in place in order to make sure that people adhere to social distancing norms. We are being told that this is just the first step. Several other steps will also be taken in the near future for unlocking down. But as of now, the government says it will strictly follow the containment policy and right. nobody, no establishments functioning in containment zones will be allowed to open at a time when Mumbai, Mumbai metropolitan region areas account to most of the cases that Maharashtra has seen. Maharashtra has crossed right. the 2 lakh mark out of which 1.45 lakh cases come from right. Mumbai metropolitan region alone. The government at, at present trying to balance between opening up for economic activities and uh, the rising COVID cases. Anand. Well, monsoon and the virus, stay safe, Vinaya, stay safe uh, to all our team which is present there and doing uh, so much work right on grounds. Uh, we're going to